All right, so exercise 5.42, let's get started on this. Um, again, I'm gonna use this thing as my pointer just cause I don't know if my mouse always, I'm not convinced if you can always see it. Okay, so wanna compare the accuracy of the endpoint rule and the midpoint rule for the computation of this integral. So this is just typically like the typical thing you might see in calculus uh, when you first learn about integration how it works. So if you've got a function that looks like this and you want to integrate or you want to approximate the area under this function, one thing that you could do is you could use, let's see here, so if you want to approximate it over this interval from zero to say one, um, you could make a box like here and figure out the area under this, or you could find this box and find the area underneath it. Or you could take the midpoint here, find the corresponding point on the function, make a rectangle there, and use that to find the area. So these are all like approximations. Obviously, they're not going to be equal to the exact area, which is this. But if you do this a whole bunch of times, then you're going to, like, if you break up the x-axis into a whole bunch of little pieces and you do you make a whole bunch of rectangles, then... For most nice functions, um, the m more you break up the x-axis, the better and better your approximation is going to get. We're not going to talk about functions which are Lebesgue integrable but not Riemann integrable. So, um, so yeah, let, let's let's just work with it a little bit and see what values we get. So. Um, we're going to use m equals 10, so basically we're going to integrate from 0 to 1, so we're going to have 0, 1, we're going to have um, m equals 10, which means, okay, so before I start getting into that, so since it's not clear whether we should use the left or right endpoints, because when we say the endpoint rule, we have to make a choice of, like, for each interval, are we going to use the left endpoint or the right endpoint? Now, for this problem, they don't really specify um, or maybe it's like mentioned somewhere in the book and I didn't read the book closely enough to tell. But in any case, we're just going to do both. Um, cause if we do both left and right endpoints, then we certainly will do the one that the author was intending. Even if it's a little more work and it tends to not, it happens to not be a little that much more work in this particular exercise. If there was a lot more work then I would probably just like choose one and go with it because I'm lazy. So um, what we want to do for this problem, first note that when m equals 10, how many points do we have on this interval? Well, m is going to be, we're going to take m to be the um, number of interior endpoints. So we've got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 different points between 0 and 1. So when you count the endpoint 0 and 1, we get 12 total points on this interval. So this is zero, this is x1. Well, okay, so zero, this is going to be x0, then we have x1 all the way up to x10, and then one is going to be equal to x11. So yeah, we have 12 points, x0 through x11, and these points are equally spaced, which is not what I have drawn here, but we'll assume that our points are equally spaced. This is just me not being able to draw good. Um, so we have, how many points do we have? Well, xi must be, well, we've got 12 total points. Um, yeah, for each i, it's just, if you, the number of intervals here is 11. So each xi is going to be i divided by 11, since 1 over 11 is the interval length. So each xi is precisely equal to the i over 11. And so we can use that to write down the left endpoint rules. So the left endpoint rule says that for the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x dx, that means, um, so for each interval, we're going to go from, let's say this is xi and this is xi plus 1. Then we've got some function here. We're going to approximate this integral on this interval. We're going to approximate the integral on this interval by 
taking the left endpoint at xi, just drawing a rectangle like this, and then filling in this area here. So what is this area? Well, the height is whatever f of xi is. So this height is f of xi, and the length is just, well, that's 1 over 11. Um, or this is xi plus 1 minus xi. And it looks like here I actually did this, so let's let's make this. So this is going from xi minus 1 to xi. Okay, so what is this? So you, ha you have to sum all these rectangles together. So we sum from 1 to 11. We take, let's see here, the function is the exponential function. So we're taking e to the power of xi minus 1, and we're using xi minus 1 because that's the left end point. And then the length of this interval, which is xi minus xi minus 1. This number is 1 over 11, and it's going to be 1 over 11 for every single i. And so we can pull, we can factor that out of all the terms, and so we get this 1 over 11 out front here. Then we have the sum, exp, and then we replace exp x minus, we basically replace xi minus 1 with the form for the formula for xi minus 1, which is precisely this, because we found that over here. Okay, so that's this. Uh, the right endpoint is the same exact thing, but here, since we're using the right x point endpoint, these will be exp of xi, and so it's the same thing, but you have this. For the midpoint, what we have to do is we have to actually find, um, instead of using xi minus 1 or xi, we take the midpoint between them, which is given by this formula. You just add them up and divide by 2, and so again, this thing changes. Okay, so each of these things tells you to add up 11 things. I don't, I don't have time to like add 11 things together. So we're going to have MATLAB do all the work for us. So I have this code here. Um, you start at 0. Then for each index from 1 to 11, you'll take the left endpoint rule and you'll add this to it because let's see, the formula is just 1 over 11 times this thing. So that's why we get the exp of this thing over 11. And then at the end, we divide by 11 here. Okay, and then similarly, the right endpoints and the midpoints. Um, there's probably a neat way to do this without using for loops. Um, but like, like typically, there's a lot of times where you want to do some, if you're doing something from like, um, for certain index indices and you go from like the first index to the last index, then um, unless the indices depend on each other, you can oftentimes use a vector to do these calculations. And since vectors are typically, typically it makes your code nicer if you can use like vectors instead of for loops. So there is probably a nicer way to do this, but again, I'm trying to avoid doing 11 sums here. So I'm not looking to make the most elegant solution. I'm just looking to get this problem done quick. So I just use a for loop and I don't care that this is not as efficient of a code as I possibly could have. Okay, so then we'll have our left endpoint approximations, the right endpoint and the midpoint. And we just put them together in a vector, and that's going to be our approximation vector. Then we're going to make E, which is you take our approximation and we subtract the actual solution. So here, this is actually using um, uh, a vector notation because I have this ones here. So it's basically you take the vector 1, 1, 1, and then when you multiply by whatever this number is, it just makes um, that number appear twice, whatever it is. Oh, well, it's just E minus 1. So this vector literally just looks like e minus 1, e minus 1, e minus 1. Okay, so note that we have used the exact value of the integral, so you just you just compute the integral. Okay, that's, that's easy. That's like calc 1. Um, and then, yeah. So now if we run the code, then these are what the approximations look like. And... Uh, let's see, your E is 2.7 something, 7.1? Well, yeah, it's, it's got to be like 7.1 something, um, and then something else. I, I don't remember these. There's some weird thing you can use to remember this using, like, Andrew Jackson. Um, 
Yeah. It's like... And he was, like, the 27th president, and he was alive in, like... Or he became president in, like, 18-something-something, and then he got 20s. I don't know. It's really weird. Um, but you can memorize he Why am I talking about this? This doesn't matter. So... Yeah, whatever E is, E minus 1 is going to be close to like 1.7. And so all these numbers are pretty close to 1.7. And you can see the errors here, actually. So especially the 717, like you see the 717 here. And here the error is like the first three you got zero. So the 71 is definitely okay. Um, yeah, it might be eight. I don't know, whatever. Um, but yeah, so these look pretty good. The first the first two are a little, little worse. Um, but if you look at the errors, they look like... Um, the numbers themselves look very similar. It's just one's a minus, one's a plus. And then the midpoint, it looks like it's doing better than those two. Um, but that, that's all they want us to do. And yeah, that's the end of this exercise.